Hello everyone, in today's video we will be going over the case of the horrifying murders of Laura Winans and Julianne Williams in the Shenandoah National Park in Virginia. The National Missing and Unidentified Person System estimates more than 600,000 people go missing in the United States every year, and about 92% of those people are found either dead or alive. The number of people who disappear in the wilderness is unclear, as the Department of Agriculture U.S. Services does not keep track. Much of the information we have for missing persons is due to the North American Bigfoot Search, which is an organization that of course looks for Bigfoot and other cryptids. So they compiled a database that the FBI uses now and some other organizations use in order to track down some missing persons in the park or at least count how many people are missing. And since that database has been created, we now know that about 1,600 people go missing in these national parks. And if you like true crime, don't forget to hit that subscription button down below so you can see the two new cases that I upload every week. On May 31st, 1996, Juliana was supposed to arrive home from a camping trip to the Shenandoah National Park with her partner Lauren. The couple had planned a backpacking trip to the park to hike and camp as Juliana's school year had just ended and Laura was to start a new job. They met as interns at Woods Woman, which is an outdoor recreation program at the Boundary Waters Canoe area of Minnesota. Laura even volunteered at a sexual assault center and was planning on becoming a wilderness guide to help women who were suffering from trauma. The couple took along their dog Taj along for their trip and head out to the Appalachian Mountains. When Julie's father reported her missing, the park rangers set out in search for the women. They found the car they drove near a hotel called the Skyland Lodge and they continued to search when they found Taj in the woods walking all alone. The rangers continued to search the woods and eventually stumbled upon Julie and Laura's campsite. They were both found bound, gagged, and their throat slit. The rangers continued to comb the forest looking for any evidence and looking possibly for the perpetrator or any clues left behind. And at this time, unfortunately, not a lot was found because of course when a crime scene is outside, a lot of it can be washed away by rain or animals or just nature in general tends to disintegrate like hair and any DNA left behind much quicker than if it was done inside of a home. So they ended up not finding much at the crime scene and not finding anybody who would have potentially done this crime while they were searching the forest. So they ended up looking towards the women's families and friends and fortunately everybody in that group had a solid alibi. So it was proven that it was not done by anybody that they knew closely. But unfortunately, because of this, the FBI realized that this was a random act of violence and that this was, you know, potentially somebody who was wanting to do the ladies harm who they possibly did not know. And so this created a much wider pool for perpetrators and this made it much harder for them to find who killed Lauren and Julie. Investigations in national parks become very complicated due to the different jurisdictions that fall within the park and of course searching through heavily wooded areas to find evidence. Surprisingly, the parks do not have a large amount of murders that are documented at least, but a large amount of people do go missing. So for months there were no leads and there were representatives from the LGBTQ plus community who started becoming outraged and they were very frustrated because they felt that the FBI wasn't looking hard enough for this person and they felt that this was a hate crime and of course this was before it was proven but because Laura and Julie were a couple, they were a lesbian couple, people were very frustrated and the community was very much up in arms because they felt like there was a killer out on the loose who was targeting gay women. So this was really scary for the time for that community and of course all of the headlines in newspapers and on the news were mostly talking about the fact that the women were gay and many people felt that that was more so talking about the fact that they were gay instead of talking about the crime and 
um, the severity of the crime and what it means. So many people in that community were very upset during this time, which is completely understandable. And it was becoming harder and harder to find any evidence or link anybody to this crime because months were going by. And as we know now, it's a lot easier to find certain criminals nowadays because of our um, modern forensic scientists, but this was in the 90s. So it was becoming harder and harder to find the person who potentially did this. And in July of 1997, a woman named Yvonne Malabasha was biking near the Blue Ridge. She was forced off the road and her bike by a man driving a truck. He screamed sexual profanities at her and tried to force her into his truck. She was able to fight him off and hid behind a tree, and he got back into his truck and tried to run her over. He gave up when he was not able to do so, and he was apprehended as he was trying to leave the park. Investigators searched his truck, and they found hand and leg restraints in his vehicle. The man's name was Daryl David Rice. Not much is known about Daryl's life before he attempted to kidnap Yvonne, but he was in his late 20s at the time, and he was living in Columbia, Maryland. He had no previous criminal history, but he was fired from his job about a month before because it was reported that he was extremely hostile to his co-workers. He would scream at work and he even punched a hole in the wall. Daryl pled guilty in his attempt to abduct Yvonne, and during this time investigators started noticing a lot of similarities between the two cases. Investigators believe that Daryl was the killer in Julie and Laura's case because of his interviews with police. He was violent, hated women, and he committed another crime in a very close geographic location to Laura and Julie's murder. Police began to look into his whereabouts and discovered through security cam footage that he entered Shenandoah Park on May 25th at 8.05 p.m. and left on May 26th at 4.57 p.m. Daryl denied entering the park in May, but he did state that he went to the park on June 1st. And on April 10, 2001, almost five years after the murders, Daryl was indicted on the murders of Julie and Laura. Prosecutors said that on several occasions, Daryl stated that he enjoyed assaulting women because they are, quote, more vulnerable, unquote, than men. He allegedly stated as well that the women deserved to die because they were gay. He was then charged with four counts of capital murder. Two of those charges were because he allegedly chose his victims because of their sexual orientation. This means that because he was charged with a hate crime, he would be eligible for the death penalty if he was convicted. Prosecutors worked on this case for years to build a solid case against Daryl, but unfortunately they were not able to do so. And there was a hair found at the crime scene that they tested against Daryl, against Laura's hair, and Julie's hair, and it did not match either one of their hairs. So they believed that there was another person there, maybe somebody possibly helping Daryl, but at this time he was not able to be convicted for this murder, and he was let out of prison in 2011. The charges were dropped against Daryl without prejudice, meaning he could still be charged at a later date. And as of me recording this right now in November 2021, this case has still not been solved. And Laura and Julie's family desperately want answers. Their friends desperately want answers. They want to know what happened to their friends. So if you have any information in regarding to this crime, please check out my description box. I will put any links, any phone numbers, anything that you could call down below, or please, like, you can always contact the FBI directly if you have any information about this case. It would be greatly appreciated.